Today I'm going to be answering one of the most frequently asked aquarium questions, how to cycle your tank and what things can affect the cycle. Let's get into it. What's up? Welcome back to my dumpster fire of a channel where I don't know what I'm doing anymore and I'm slowly slipping into insanity. As I mentioned, today we're going to be talking about tank cycling, cycling your new aquariums, your fish tank, your shrimp tanks specifically. Going to be giving you some things to look out for, some different factors, not just the basic uncycling. Just stay tuned, you'll see. Let's just, let's just stop deleting alien. Let's get into the video. So to start, I'll just explain the nitrogen cycle. You start off with like decaying food, waste, snail waste, shrimp waste, fish waste, you know, the poo, the pee, all that stuff. And that's going to create ammonia. I don't know why I had to look at the screen there. I know this off by heart. The waste is going to create ammonia. And then the beneficial bacteria that is going to, that we're going to build, that's the point of cycling. You build this beneficial bacteria. It's going to convert that ammonia, which is, sorry, now I need to look. It's going to convert the ammonia, the NH3, into nitrate, which is NO2. So the beneficial bacteria uses up the hydrogen and adds some oxygen into that and changes the composition of the molecule. And then you have another step of beneficial bacteria that's going to convert that nitrite into nitrate. I really hope I said nitrite to start. Nailed nitrites it. are first, nitrates are second. Ammonia and nitrites are very, very toxic to the shrimp. It's like, you know, having I don't know, poison in the tank. It's going gonna, it's gonna to burn them slowly uh, if you have have fish you're gonna notice ammonia burns on the fish oh, no. uh, it can actually affect plant growth as well if the concentrations get too high although plants can use they do use these chemicals the nitrogen the hydrogen the oxygen in the molecule they use that to help um, grow but too much will cause severe melt and then the nitrates they're not as toxic but they are still bad imagine nitrates like a, a smoke filled room so a little bit of smoke isn't too bad you can manage that for a while but if the room gets filled with smoke you know you're gonna eventually die of the smoke inhalation it's not going to be a good long-term way to live so you want to keep your nitrates below 20 parts per million that's like the maximum that's when you want to do water changes my nitrates in my tanks they hardly ever get above like 10 except the snail tanks but that's a whole other thing my shrimp tanks the nitrates hardly ever get above 10 because of the water changes that i do and the uh, the plant life that i have with ammonia and nitrite in an active tank with livestock in it those those levels should be zero they should, it should be zero zero and then a maximum of 20 once the nitrates hit 20 you do your water changes i hope that made sense that's your nitrogen cycle in a nutshell this toque is too hot there we go. And now let's get into cycling your tank. So the basics, this is how I cycle my tank. I do it kind of the, the poor man's way. I take, but you have your new tank all set up, you know, filters in there, it's all running. And then you ghost feed the tank. So you would feed it with whatever fish flakes, uh, uh, bug bites, whatever food pellets you have, algae wafer. You put that in there like you would have, oh my God, I'm out of breath. You put that food in there like you have fish in the tank and then it's just going to rot it's going to create an ammonia source the beneficial bacteria is going to develop that's going to turn it into nitrate you know we already talked about that by ghost feeding the tank or okay anyway um so while ghost feeding the tank i kind of leave it for the first week i'll put a little pinch of food in every other day just like i had fish in the tank right little pinch of food and then i just leave it let it rot and then after the first week that's when i check the ammonia levels you don't really want to let the ammonia get above five parts per million too high of an ammonia level can actually affect the cycle Wow. During cycling is basically the only time I check my ammonia and nitrite levels unless I have an issue in the tank. Speaking of nitrite, that should start to form after maybe a week and a half, two weeks. You should start to see some nitrites in the tank. And then nitrates are going to take another, you know, week, week and a half, maybe, maybe, maybe two weeks. The whole cycle in a basic tank with ghost feeding, it does take about four weeks for you to get the beneficial bacteria all established. And then in my experience, Experience, I have had to do kind of large water changes because I continue to ghost feed throughout that whole period to make sure there's a continual ammonia source in the tank. You just let that food rot and trust me, it will cycle the tank. You don't have to go spend your money on expensive supplements or bacteria things or ammonia sources. Just a little bit of fish food and some time and you can cycle your tanks. No problem. It's what I did for most of mine. And then after that three to four week period, you know your ammonia level should be zero, your nitrate level should be zero 
and then your your nitrates they could be really really high that's where the large water changes may come into effect and then you're ready to add your livestock you just acclimate them as normal with shrimp you drip acclimate with fish you just you know you float the bag whatever you have to do and ta-da your tank is ready to go that's that's the simplest thing those are for like neocaridina tanks maybe betta fish tanks very basic tanks without much extra stuff in there they're gonna take three to four weeks etc nice. etc et all right now here's the fun part some other steps you can take that might actually help you speed up your cycle you can save some time so the first thing here is going to be adding a pure ammonia source when you ghost feed like that you do have to wait a day or two for the food to really rot and start leaching a lot of ammonia into the tank if you just add a raw ammonia source you can just put in like five parts per million ammonia on day one and then it can start producing the bacteria for you so a pure ammonia source can help speed up the cycle by a couple days second here is going to be bacterial products there are some that claim to be instant cycle i don't necessarily trust them with them i would put in the ammonia source put in the bacterial product and then probably wait a week and check the levels and then maybe you know i i, I would not put in the those instant start things and then add fish or shrimp like they say you can i just don't trust them let me know if you've had different experiences in the comments but yeah i i haven't even tried to use them because i don't trust them you know and because i haven't used them i don't know how much they could actually help speed up like i said it could maybe do it in a, in a week or so but you're gonna have to check the levels and see for yourself third is something i know can give you an instant cycle and that is just adding an, an old used filter if you take a sponge filter out of a an established tank and put it into a new tank it's going to have an instant cycle all the bacteria is going to be there it's going to be able to process the ammonia and all that stuff and if you give it you know kind of a day to establish itself in the tank you could probably add fish the next day if you already if you have a fully established filter that is part b to this is just sharing filter media maybe taking like a one little sponge and putting it into your new hang on back and the other one uh things like that can help speed it up they won't necessarily do an instant cycle if it's not the full filter for the tank and then also squeezing your old filter media into the new tank getting that mulm and and kind of gross stuff into the new tank bacteria comes with that and that will help you get a faster cycle as well the these are this is a proven method i've done this myself it does it can speed it up by like a week maybe two weeks once again check your levels fourth here this is really going to help out your cycles adding snails when you're adding snails to a cycling tank you have to make sure that they're a hardy type personally i use ram's horn snails they're nuclear bomb proof i've used malaysian trumpet snails they're pretty hardy things like the bigger snails like the nearite snails they probably won't survive the high ammonia and nitrite levels they they may pass during the cycling so you may want to keep them in your established tanks and add them after the cycle's done but if you have ram's horns toss those into the cycling tank and they'll definitely help produce more uh, waste and ammonia etc and help the beneficial bacteria grow a little faster so those were factors that speed it up so now we have factors that could slow it down first thing this is going to affect yeah. shrimp keepers eucaridina shrimp keepers and people who do planted tanks a lot of the planted substrates they're going to leach ammonia anything that's considered an active substrate the ones that buffer that ph down to like 6.5 or 6 or whatever it is things like ada amazonia akadama i forget all the names of them i'll have to throw the list on the screen there's a whole bunch of them planted substrates a lot of them leach ammonia which is going to increase your cycle time i know it, uh, it kind of sounds counterintuitive you have an ammonia source in you in there you think the the cycle would be faster but because it's a constant ammonia source you kind of have to wait for it to finish leaching the ammonia for you to add uh, livestock in and that generally takes about six to eight weeks depending on the depth of your substrate the type of your substrate once again you're going to have to check your levels to know for sure but just something to be aware of if you're cycling a caridina shrimp tank it doesn't take four weeks it's probably going to take you eight weeks another factor that can slow down your cycle or affect your cycle are the amount of plants you have in there if you have a heavily heavily planted tank right from the start they may use up that ammonia and and nitrate and stuff like that and it may take longer to establish the beneficial bacteria it could also help you add livestock faster because it's keeping those levels down <laughs> once again uh, this broken record here check your levels <laughs> one thing with the plants as i mentioned before high ammonia levels can affect them and cause them to melt which 
then makes them be an ammonia source, you know, decaying matter. So it can start to be a, um, what's it called? A snowball effect of ammonia sources. And then it, you have really, really high ammonia. And as I mentioned earlier, really, really high ammonia can actually slow down your cycle as well. Whew, sheesh. And last on my list, I don't consider this one way or the other. It can help slow it down. It can help speed it up. You Depends uh, what happens, I guess. Ooh. And that's just the water parameters. And that's you're going to be your hardness, that's your TDS, that. your GH, KH, and your pH in the tank. So this is kind of hard to explain, but I'm going to try my best. Loser. I'm not I'm not looking off some source off the internet. This is stuff I wrote down here. And I'm, I'm going to try and go and explain this the best I can. How your other water parameters parameters can affect your cycle so if you have softer water already and you you have let's god damn how do i know i need to start over i'm gonna start with people with inert substrates if you have an inert substrate and you have softer water already with like a lower kh value the high organics during the cycle can actually eat away at that kh and then you don't have any ph buffer in the tank and it can cause a ph crash the ph crash causes a bunch of your beneficial bacteria to die and then you get that cloudy bacterial bloom that a lot of people get during their cycling tanks and generally you're told to just leave that and and let the tank figure it out and with cycling i agree you should probably just leave it you could also try doing like a 50 percent water change just to lower the ammonia levels now if you have those active buffering substrates you don't have to worry about this as much because the substrate itself has things in it that keep the ph from crashing that low but i've noticed with the inert substrates if you have if the kh gets to zero that ph plummets to like below five and it affects the whole cycle and slows it all down so that's kind of how a low tds can affect your tank and then the low tds can slide in and affect the ph because kh is a ph buffer I, I think i've explained this before i don't know maybe i'll make a video on that later and now high tds shouldn't necessarily affect your cycle uh, too much it could make the ph too high like if you have a billion tds and like a, a 10.0 ph that's the same as having a crashing ph you have a spiking ph so it's gonna make the cycle a lot slower so you um, you want to make sure your ph well you really want to make sure that your parameters the kh gh and ph are within the right ranges for the livestock you plan to put in that tank now a lot of tropical fish don't care too much as long as the ph is at a good level the water hardness doesn't matter too much to them the shrimp are a lot more sensitive to this check out my video i'll put a card somewhere that video is all about you know taking care of shrimp's water parameters stuff like that and you know things like cichlids they need harder water there's there are fish that need harder water there are fit some fish that need softer water uh depending what kind of tank you want to run etc just make sure you have the right parameters for the things you want in the tank guys Whew. oh let's go to the outro page and wrap this fucking shit up. All right, this one went a bit longer than I planned. I kind of struggled at points. I'm, I'm just getting over a really bad man cold. I, I just have it's a little bit of chest congestion left. I'm not sure if you can hear it or not. Hope you enjoyed. Hope I taught you something. I, ho I hope this was a beneficial video. Thank you for joining and watching. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. If you made it all the way to the end, say, I want to ride my bicycle. I want to ride my bicycle. Just leave that in the comments below. <laughs> Make sure to like, subscribe, leave that comment. I have a Patreon, YouTube channel member links, uh, PayPal donation link. If you want to see the channel grow, if you want to see me get Caradina tanks, another shrimp rack in here, guys, that kind of stuff really helps out. I don't pay my bills with, with the money from, from the channel. I put it back into the channel. Look at all this stuff I got. Wow. wow. And on that note, Patreon shoutouts for Leather Turtle, Michael Redman, and Brian Dotson. Brian Dotson at that $10 tier. Your hat is on the way, I swear. And YouTube member shoutouts here. Mitch Bottom on my new newest member poseidon's pets wow i can't read these poseidon's pets neil mitchell robert redman i don't know how many fingers i have anymore jamie anderson tater salad and rival if you want your name shouted out in a video those links are below as i mentioned shameless plug check me out on twitch i'm streaming there almost every day except when i have to install updates oh yeah discord fan club link in the description like subscribe share blah da dee do do ba do and remember guys keep your shrimp hand strong Till next time bye bye now